Hey there, this is Will again, and uh, today we're going to be diving a little bit more into this whole question of how could you ultimately, say, use action strings in Dorico. And um, I'm going to focus on expression maps today, which is a fairly big topic. I'm going to try and keep it uh, brief, but at the same time, you know, this is, this is pretty um, dense material. So what we've talked about so far in the last couple of lessons is just introducing the principles of using um, an instrument like action strings in Dorico. And I talked about why I do that before. Um, we've talked about uh, some basics like creating custom playing techniques and playback techniques. So go and check out my other video on that um, if you if you missed that one. Um, one thing that I actually forgot to do last time, and I want to... Uh, share with you here. Let me switch over to my screen here is I forgot to talk about creating a, a custom instrument in the last one. It's very simple. When you're in Dorico, uh, if you're in Dorico 5, then you can go into instruments and you can actually create your own instrument. Um, for example, I'm, I'm going to do an example today on Stradivari cello here, which is uh, part of my contact library. And you can actually just go ahead and uh, oftentimes I want to um, pull in a string instrument because there's, there is some stuff in here that is saved by default. So I'm going to go with violin cello and I'm going to use this button down here, which is going to basically create a new instrument uh, that's kind of a copy of that, right? So I can go in here now and I can call this Stradivari cello. And I can, you know, fill in other stuff, uh, the instrument names and whatever I want. Um, go ahead and hit OK. And now that instrument turns up when I'm in setup. For example, I have this violoncello uh, already added, but if I were to go ahead and look up Stradivari, now I can see my Stradivari cello there. So that is how that works. Um, I am going to use the cello that I have set up here because I've already kind of put together a little bit of a demo in order to save time, but I think it'll still cover all the details. I wanted to just cover how to create custom instruments because you probably want to create a custom instrument for, for example, action strings too. Um, you might also want to create one for, you know, a synth massive or, um, you know, Omnisphere or whatever you're working with. So you can load it up and you can start collecting uh, those instruments with their various presets. One of the one of the most important things that you can uh, orient around um, having your own custom instruments is like custom templates, maybe where you have an ensemble that you want to load up in Dorico, let's say for a hybrid type score, uh, where you might have some more non-conventional instrumentation. Anyway, that's just covering my basis because last time I said I would cover creating custom instruments and I forgot. Um, so let's go into this expression map stuff. So what I'm going to demonstrate for you here is uh, I've got this cello and I'll just play this single note back because, you know, it always helps to go step by step, right? So I just got a cello playing a uh, playing a, a note there and um, this G is just being drawn out and uh, nothing going on right now. And we can see over here in the instrument, it's, it's choosing this virtuoso patch as it plays. So what's going on there? If you look real close, you'll see that this is tied to key switch C minus one and that's important to know for uh, what I'm about to tell you. So. Let's decide, let's say that I want um, the default patch here not to be uh, this virtuoso, but I want my default patch, let's say, to be staccato. Uh, let's, let's do that, okay? Um, so I don't want to get into using the instrument too much, but if I were to go down here, E minus one is currently related to staccato. So I could set the default by going up into window and I am going to go to Expression Maps right here under the Window menu. And that brings up this window. And 
Whenever you create a new expression map, I've already created one here. I, cr I just basically hit the plus sign, created a new expression map, and I already called it Stradivari Cello, but there's no steps there that you really need to go through. What you do want to be aware of is that there's always an init name here, and you can go in here and you can say, well, I want my init to be C minus one, which is what I had set, which is why it went to that virtuoso. But if I change this to E minus one, then what we're going to notice after I hit OK, is that when I select this note and start playing it, lo and behold, it has selected staccato. So check this out. Even if I were to start with Virtuoso, as soon as, as, soon as this note plays, it switches to staccato. So that is how you set the initial playback in your expression map. But let's talk about something a little bit more interesting. Let's say that I want to use saltasto here, which is when it is played down uh, closer to uh, at the at the end of the closer to the bridge. So I'm going to go to saltasto. It's kind of a more brittle sound, so it's definitely a timbral change that um, I want to use in some situations. So I've got my saltasto. The way that I do this is I click plus. I can search through all of the playback techniques. We talked last time about how to create playback techniques. You select Soltesto, you hit OK, and then you get Soltesto here. It's important that it's listed with the type bass. OK, Soltesto. So now I've added a key switch here. I click to this key switch button. It adds a key switch. I go with G minus 1 because down here for Soltesto in my instrument, that's G minus 1. Now what this key switch is, that, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to zoom in quite so dramatically. Whatever this key switch is, it's entirely dependent upon your instrument, okay? Um, so now I've got Soltasto when I mark in my score as Soltasto. So let's do that. I'm going to select my note, and I'm going to go over here to Playing Techniques. And uh, down in my Strings area, right, I've got this, like, Strings drop-down box down here. I've got... Soltasto. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then lo and behold, when I play this, we're going to see that it switches to Soltasto down here in my instrument. So that's the first thing is I'm, set, I'm, I'm connecting my playback techniques and playing techniques with my expression map to actually fire off that Soltasto um, sort of articulation, right? But let's go a step further now because we often want not just to decide uh, we want pizzicato or arco or soltasto or something, but we want a crescendo, let's say, some dynamics. I'm going to show you how to set that up, um, understand how it works, and then also monitor it. Okay, so um, right down here, I've got a dynamic setup, and it's actually set up. You can see me adjusting it here, and you can see on my keyboard, it's, it's set to the mod wheel, which is CC1 by default, okay? You could set that probably in your instrument to whatever you want, but it's set to CC1. So we are gonna go through here and I'm going to just make sure, uh, there's a couple of things that I had kind of put in here that I don't really want anymore. Um, so, okay, let's, we, we're all set here. So I've got Soltasto and that is firing off the appropriate articulation in my instrument. But if I go ahead and I select these, I'm going to set a um, crescendo. And if I go, if you're a Dorico user, uh, which I imagine you are, if you're watching this video, you hit Shift and D, and it brings up the little uh, dynamics pop-up. I'm going to go PPP to, with a little hairpin that's a little less than sign to Forte. All right, like that. So let's see. We play it back, and... Oh my. There it goes. All right, so what's happening here? What happens is we go into our expression map, and we go to Soltasto, and we see that I have the volume dynamic set to control change one, so that is my mod wheel. If you want to do this with CC11, you'd make this 11. If you wanted to do it with volume, like CC7, these are MIDI CC numbers. Right, so I've set this to one because my instrument defaults to that. I could change it. I would need to configure it in my instrument and then here as well. But what I'm basically saying is ignore the note velocity 
and only focus on the control change. If I set this to note velocity and I go back, even though I still have the crescendo here, you're going to notice if I, if I were to go and just set this dynamic to, let's say, halfway like that, right? Now, when I play this back, it's not going to respect the, the crescendo at all. There's no change in the dynamic at all. And that's because it's now looking at velocity. And we can see my velocity note down here. And this is what I was talking about, about monitoring it. You can see that there's a dynamics lane down here. And the dynamics lane is clearly showing that there's kind of an automated dynamics from uh, the very quiet to the very loud, right? But I had set my expression map to regard velocity as the volume uh, information. So if I go back to expression maps and I select my Soltasto and I change this back to control change one, now hit OK, we're going to see that there is indeed a volume change. And we can see that down here in the dynamics as it slowly goes up. And you can see the mod wheel changing. So if you wanted to do that with uh, MIDI CC, then that would be pretty straightforward to do. So that is um, the essentials of everything you need to know to work with expression maps to kind of layer things. Um, you can also do combinations. So when you are in um, your expression map window here, you could also go ahead and say, you know, I wanted to um, do Marcato uh, and Soltasto. So I want, you know, it's, it to be played down uh, at the bridge. I'm hitting Command. So I've just selected them both here. You can see them displayed right there. I hit OK. And now when there's both a Marcato, a Marcato and Soltasto, let's say I set my control change here to 1, and Marcato and Soltasto, I could come in here and I could mark this with my Marcato and it's going to use that I didn't do that for some reason sorry didn't do that. That is because I went into there and I did not set up G minus one as my key switch. So it went to the default. So I'm going to go in here and say G minus one. Okay. Now all that that is going to do, if I were to say Marcato here, I don't actually have a sample that can fire off Soltesto and Marcato in this instrument. But maybe I would do this where I wanted it to play back. As you can see, it's selected Soltasto again correctly because I fixed my expression map. But maybe, um, you know, I want to have Marcato in there uh, because I'm going to give this to a live player and I want them to interpret that. Even though my sample library doesn't have a combination of Marcato and Soltasto. Anyway, I think I've covered uh, everything that, that most folks would want to know in terms of how do you really work with your expression maps to get this stuff working. But there are a few more things. I know I'm running dangerously close to making a super long video here, but I want to cover a couple more things. Um, setting an init key switch is important. Decide what you want your default key switch to be and set it. That'll make your experience using instruments much more consistent. I did want to point out something called setting up mutual exclusion groups. This is just going to take a second. Um, this is important if you want to make sure that you don't accidentally have um, uh, two articulations confusing your instruments. Down here, um, there's a little kind of expandable area called mutual exclusion groups. In Dorco Pro, creating mutual exclusion groups happens automatically. But you can say, OK, um, I'm going to create one that's called um, articulations, let's say. Um, and in there, I'm going to have uh, pizzicato. And I'm going to have uh, staccato. OK. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically saying, 
If I put in Pizzicato in my score and it's currently playing Staccato, kill the Staccato and switch to Pizzicato. In other words, I don't want it to ever be confused about like it's trying to play Pizzicato and Staccato at the same time because it can't. So um, it's important to, uh, well, a better example would be like Pizzicato and, and Arco or Legato or something like that. If, if the two articulations are impossible to play at the same time, um, then you can use mutual exclusion groups to say, okay, do the most recent, ignore what it, you know, basically as soon as I say do something, replace the prior um, with that. Because otherwise sometimes you can get confusing outcomes. Uh, let me see, there's one, a couple of other notes I wanted to make. Um, oh, how to add this expression map in an endpoint. So this is very, very important. Um, when you've created your expression map, you need to apply it. And the way that that gets applied is in your endpoint. So if I were to go, I've got my violoncello here. I'm going to go to my play mode. I'm going to select the track here. And then I'm going to click on the settings, the endpoint setup. And down here is where I would select my expression map. If I don't expect, if I don't do this here, if there is no expression map linked here, then it does, it, it's not going to work. None of it's going to work. It doesn't matter how good your expression map is. This is where it connects. This instrument is going to use this expression map. And if you don't make that connection, well, then nothing's going to happen. Okay. That is super, super important. And then the last thing I'm going to point out here is something called note off events. So I'm going to the library and expression maps. And when I select one of my expression articulations, there's a note off event here. Now, sometimes in a library, for example, there will actually be key switches for a specific note end. Uh, I find this in my guitar instruments a lot. Like let's say there's a nylon string and you want it, you want to end your note with like a slap on the string or something like that, or just a note end, a dull or something like that. There are often in instruments key switches that are note endings. And you can do that. You can say, okay, I want note off and I'm going to set a key switch for that. So that as soon as my MIDI note ends, it fires that. And then you get this really, really nice tight control over, um, over what's happening, right? So super, super, super important there. Um, that is it for this. If you have any questions, of course, post a uh, comment below, but also please like and subscribe. It really, really helps me. I've been making some good progress and I want to keep uh, exposing my videos to a larger audience. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Please leave comments and questions and I look forward to seeing you in a couple more days and we're going to keep working on these Darko workflow tips. I'll see you then.